This is the Jack Wolf Knives Low Drag Jack, the January 2023 knife from Jack Wolf Knives, and it is a beaut, uh, just like all the others. This one here is a bullet ended jack, and it has got this incredible blade. Now, if you've watched the podcast at all over the last couple of weeks or come to Thursday Night Knives, uh, you know I've been raving about this. I I really like the shape of this spear point blade, and you don't hear me say that often. Uh, I have said that about uh, uh, other Jack Wolf knives, like uh, this dog, like the canine Jack. I love this spear point too. I love the big uh, belly. I love the downward rake to the um, edge, but this one here uh, does that in spades. It's got a skinnier waist here right up at the Ricasso and a more dramatic uh, downward angle um, and then quite a belly. And then the point is center line on the blade, but center line on this blade with that tilt and that belly puts the point closer to the bottom, which makes it really good for uh, using that point for sort of drag cuts and pull cuts. And then, of course, this downward angle just really kind of Mm, accelerates that cut by pulling uh, almost kind of like a recurve uh, by bringing material into that that triangle anyway beautiful since we're on the blade uh, this is the first jack wolf knife uh, so far in s90 v now i heard that he has he it was requested uh, a different steel than m390 and he chose s he being ben belkin the gentleman who uh, designed this knife, uh, created this company, and sent me this knife, a gentleman and a scholar, Ben Belkin, um, uh, gave the people what they want yet again with S90V. And I'm excited to say, uh, and maybe a little puzzled, uh, to say that this is my very first S90V uh, bladed knife. And I guess that's not such a crazy thing. I think for S90V, you have to actively seek it out, uh, basically. Uh, it's pretty pretty high-end steel and man it goes well on this high-end modern slip joint oh man two and a half minutes in and i haven't done this you're like man close it open it let me see boom so right there at the half stop you've got a perfectly flush man i thought i moisturized before i rolled but apparently not enough uh you have that perfectly flat spring uh, on the back just beautiful work there uh from the OEM here and we do not know who the OEM is and that's kind of exciting um, and look at that perfect perfectly flat uh, that's slip joint uh, nerd kind of stuff and then perfectly flat there and of course perfectly flat when it's closed um, because it's not necessarily uh, bad to have a spring that stands proud in the half position, but it, it really does show uh, extreme refinement in the in the building process when you get that. So I think a lot of people uh, seek that out uh, as a good thing when they're looking at slip joints. Uh, I know I do, but it's uh, just for that reason. Um, it just sort of shows off the workmanship. Here on the bullet end, of the of the jackknife here we got a really cool chamfer here that sort of points it uh that i like um you know sort of tapers towards the fluting it's a single flute on this one both bolsters have a single fluting unlike most slip joint knives this one can be uh taken down you remove these here i'm gonna close this you remove those screws and that removes this cover perfectly uh perfectly embedded, well, that's not the right word, what's the word? Perfectly, whatever, slotted in that area and then contoured into the into the rest of the titanium on these bolsters. Remove that and then you have access to the screws and pins uh, that make up the rest of it and this can be taken down. But don't, I, I don't know, I, I don't say don't, but I'm not going to. Ooh, I didn't realize this till looking at it through the camera. The front, it looks sort of like a, a uh, 1950s, like a Korea era airplane, it's a jet, right? Um, but this shape here is really nice on the ergonomics when it's open and you're using it. Uh, it just has that swell end back here. It swells at the end, giving you 
um, I don't know, that sort of almost egg-like shape in there. I really like the way this nestles into the, the palm. You can use it uh, butted up like that. I've used this one a bit. Uh, this one got a lot of food duty. I traveled th with this one uh, so far this month uh, and, you know, used this as my food knife a couple of times, which was cool. And then it's done uh, box opening duty and a, a couple of light chores. Chores meaning like opening boxes and that kind of thing. Uh, actually, oddly enough, I used to use the example like I don't use my knives for much, but, you know, cutting the threads off of collars. Well, I actually had threads popping out all over on this brand new shirt that I really like. And I'm like wondering about the craftsmanship of it now, but I spent a minute or two uh, de-threading de it with this. Very thin. Uh, that was today. Very thin, very sharp, very thin. Look at that. S90V, very, very thin. Full height, uh, hollow grind, just how I like it. I love that swedge. Beautiful. Beautiful, uh, just right to the point. So if you have to poke this into a um, clamshell package or something, which I haven't, but I bet this would be very good at it uh, because of that point and that swedge. Get in there with that sort of diamond-like tip and then push it using this surface at the front of the belly. Go all around that brand new, whatever you're getting out of the clamshell package. I think this would do great at that. Yes, quite a beautiful knife. Nice pull. Um, I'm not one for rating pulls, but if I had to, I'd call this a an eight, I guess. Uh, eight to open. Seven to close. I don't know if that's a thing, but... Mm, mm, mm. So beautiful. I love this thing. Let me uh, compare it. So again, here it is with the canine jack. Uh, the first dog like jack i've ever owned and uh, that's for a reason i always thought they were uh i don't know kind of weird looking and then when i got this in hand i was shocked and amazed at how uh how really great that ergonomics those ergonomics are and how much i really really like the way this feels in hand um, but also the blades uh before this came i thought that this really was dramatic but i think this one is even more dramatic um, as a spear point blade. And then here it is with another one. It sort of reminds me of, and, uh, oh man, she's a beaut. This, this is a beaut. And with that really, really nice, uh, carbon fiber, uh, I'm forgetting now what the carbon fiber is, but I love the downward, uh, tilt of that blade. It really makes pull cutting, uh, very, mm, like, you know, easy. And then you've got uh, swedge all the way down to the tip there. And then you've got that uh, working, working, nice working tip down below the the uh, the knuckle line. What is the name? If you haven't figured out, I, I can't remember what this model is called. And I'm trying to cover for it as I speak because I'm trying to remember what it's called. But uh, I'm just going to do this. And uh, uh, well, I thought the box might be around here somewhere. It is, but... I don't know. Uh, forgive me. I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank now about what this one is called, but I absolutely love it. Probably my second favorite of the Jack Wolf knives. Love this thing. Uh, but so let me show you what's this called? Please put it in the in the comments so I'm not totally ashamed, and I'll remember it in two shakes of a lamb's tail uh, in a minute. Uh, also, I wanted to show you the awesome artwork as usual. That's part of the uh, the Jack Wolf Knives brand is the branding, and it is the best. It's awesome. Low drag Jack. Each knife has a concept, and then he worked uh, with a comic book um, artist who creates these characters. This is emulating the Miami Vice aesthetic, and Jack Wolf Knives. You got this cool low drag Jack, and then you take this off nice embossed top and you got a pog on the bottom each one has a pog with the uh with the theme and you got a sticker with the same same thing and then you get it oh wait this one's a little different actually and difficult to get out sometimes it gets stuck in there this one says miami knights and it has the same guy in there but uh based on miami vice you got the jack wolf 
cleaning cloth. You know what I've been doing is saving all of these uh, and just putting them away in the boxes. Um, and I don't know, just, I, I feel like they're precious and they need to be maintained that way. Um, okay, and before I get out of here, let me show you, uh, just with some comparisons, three knives that a, a lot of people know in the, in the category. This is a standard size trapper. This one is a case with a CV steel and a nice uh, patina. And that usual yellow Del Rin. So people are pretty familiar with this knife because you can buy it everywhere or, or one to the same measurement. Uh, here it is with a standard size Swiss Army knife. Yes, that's right. Also trying to cover again because I can never remember. What is this, 92 millimeters or something? Uh, so a little bit bigger than a standard size Swiss Army knife. Uh, this one's the Pioneer, uh, the Farmer X, I believe. Yeah, with the all. Love this thing. And then here it is with the um, GEC number 15. So a, a little bit, little bit smaller than the 15. Or I'm sorry, a little bit larger than the 15. By the way, look at that beautiful, beautiful bone. I love that. Ooh, love that. But I also love micarta. And I've been, uh, with the micartas that I get from Jack Wolf Knives, they are beautiful, high quality micarta. And um, I've been accelerating the darkening of them by putting oil in them. And what I find is that when you put them back in the leather pouch, the suede side tends to absorb the oil out of the micarta. So it'll be, it'll be a long sort of, just like getting this to have a perfect imprint of the knife, will take time and use and carry. Uh, it'll be the same thing with getting these nice and dark. It'll be time and use and carry and putting more oil on it and putting it back in here. And then eventually it'll all come to a stasis and this will be a nice, beautiful, dark uh, mark uh, markida. I always do that. A really beautiful, dark micarta. Um, but before it gets there, it's a really beautiful, semi-dark micarta. All right. Uh, oh, one last thing before I go. Let me show it with three other modern slip joints. I never show these off with other modern slip joints. There it is with the Gitano uh, made by uh, Lion Steel. That's uh, tip of the hat to a Navaja. Here it is with the, with the uh, Fox Knives. Um, uh, collector Knives exclusive. Um, what do you call it? Gunstock Jack. This is a great little knife. I uh, almost forgot I had it because it got kind of slipped behind some stuff in my slip joint drawer. And then here is the Gentleman Jack from Medford Knives. Um, this was from the very, very first run. He sent this to me. This was a, a gift. And um, uh, it's a cool knife. I, I, I haven't carried it in a little while. Um, everything about it I love. It's got a deep, hollow grind. Uh, beautifully done. Everything about it I love except... It's very, uh, the action. Uh, I know that, I'm, I'm sure that at this point, the action uh, from whatever Medford slip joints are right now, Gentleman Jack, and there might be others. I'm sure it's way more dialed in than this. This was his first go at it, um, but cool knife. Um, so there it is with that. If you're familiar, uh, it's a high-end, you know, for similar price point, I guess, as this one. Um, all right, put these away and just say thank you for watching this is available now uh, as i post this uh, at a number of retailers uh, but they're going fast as these all do uh, so don't uh, sit uh, don't wait on it if you're you know if you like any of the jack wolf knives as they come out and and uh, and you've saved your shekels i'd say uh, go for it immediately because they you know they sell out and i'm not sure what the plan is uh, maybe he will uh, maybe ben will come back out with a, another year's run of the knives in different covers or something. I don't know. But if you like it, I'd say go for it uh, if you can. All right. Thanks for watching.